As we continue to navigate the offseason for the LA Kings, we need to pause for a season recap of the Ontario Reign, the Kings AHL affiliate. How did Cal Peterson really look? What's the health update on Alex Turcott? We'll talk about that and more with Jared Chaffron of the Ontario Reign on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network, also co-host of the Puck Podcast, the weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years. And of course, a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 years. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. We are excited to be joined once again by Jared Chaffron. He is the manager of communications and content for the Ontario Reign and contributor to LA Kings Insider. And we are overdue for a check-in on the Kings AHL affiliate. Hey, Jared, how are you doing today? Doing great, Eddie. Thanks for having me. Thank you for your time. Um, I know that the season for the Ontario Reign came to an end early in the playoffs, kind of like the LA Kings, Um, but it seemed like the season was pretty up and down. Um, We checked in with you about halfway through the season, uh, but maybe you could give us a quick recap of how the season uh, went as now that it has concluded. Yeah, I think, you know, definitely up and down is a great way to put it because the team was incredibly streaky. And at the end of the season, they just couldn't get out of their own way. I think they just made too many mistakes. Um, It was a younger roster. Not that it hasn't been. I mean, the last couple of years has been a young roster for Ontario. And I think this year, definitely a little bit of a lower level of experience. A lot of young guys who are in their first year pro. And while there was some definite positive things, there are individually a lot of players who are taking some, some good steps and some steps to being more prepared for the NHL level. As a team, uh, they didn't achieve their goals. They did make the playoffs, but they finished lower in the standings in, in the sixth seed in the Pacific Division and then lost uh, two quick games to the Colorado Eagles, two games in the playoffs that really could have gone either way. They had the lead in both of those games. The first game was an overtime loss. Uh, the second one was in regulation, but uh, definitely played both played both of them pretty well against Colorado. Just didn't go their way. They were on the road, and it's uh, in the American Hockey League now. They have a new playoff format, uh, just a best of three in the first round. It, it kind of ends up becoming a best of seven as you as you move on, but you start them with a short series, and it could be good for an upset, but for the rain in their case, uh, it wasn't good. So just a two-game exit to Colorado, and now we're in the offseason. I want to definitely touch on some of the players, uh, obviously, but I do want to start with um, the head coach. Uh, and there is a report that Marco Sturm is going to get a contract extension. We'll see if that comes to pass or not. Um, but I, I've always thought being an AHL coach, being a minor league coach, it's a tough spot because you you want to perform well. You've got fans that you want to entertain. And yet you're really developing players for somebody else. Uh, and if you succeed, those players leave your team. So it's always you're not always based on wins and losses. But I do want to ask you, how do you feel that Marco Sturm did in his first season as head coach of the Reign? I think there's a lot of learning for him. I think there's kind of two phases of the learning. Number one is that he had never really been a a head coach at any level in pro hockey before. He had been the head coach of the German national team. They did extremely well at the Olympics a few years back. But, you know, when you look at a team in a long season – um, this was a new experience for Marco. So I think there was that experience of being the guy, the boss. He'd obviously been an assistant with the Kings. So he was familiar with his surroundings. He was familiar with the Kings system, with what Todd McClellan wants, with what a lot of the players give you. I mean, a lot of these players that he was coaching were playing in the NHL at one point. So he knew a lot of the players, but for him to kind of grow into his shoes of he's the decision maker the buck stops with him. I think there was an adjustment period for that. And then also just the AHL as a league, Marco Sturm never played in the AHL. He came right into the NHL and 
was in the NHL for his entire professional career, then was coaching in the NHL. So there are things that are different in the NHL. You have a lot more back-to-backs. You have a lot more travel by bus, uh, travel by commercial flight. There's different changes to the schedule. There's players being moved up and down. There's different some different rules in certain uh, games. The games are officiated a little bit differently. I think that was a bit of a change for him. And so, you know, when you wrap that all up, it was definitely a period of learning for him. And, you know, I'm not what's going on. I, there, those reports are out there for that he might be getting an extension. I know that Marco expressed to me that he definitely wants to return. Um, it's probably just more on if, if that fit works out for, for the Kings and, and what, you know, all the contract uh, language that has to be written. But I know that he wants to come back. And I, I think we would see if he is able to, to come to an agreement and come back for another season that not having all those first time things might benefit the team a lot more in, in the wins and losses column. I think developmentally, Marco came to work every day, got on the ice and did the best he could and did a lot of really good things developing some of these young players. And we saw a lot of progress from some of these young guys. So that I don't think was ever concerned. But yeah, I mean, the fans in Ontario want a winning team to root for. So it was definitely not fun. And, and Marco, you know, I'm sure he would say the same thing that, finishing in sixth place is not what you set out to do when you start a season. So I'm sure from that aspect, he would like to get another chance and see if he can, you know, have some more success with this group. Obviously most Kings fans that listen and watch this show are everydayers want to know about Cal Peterson, um, who obviously is getting set to play in the world championships for the U S overall the season. I know the numbers weren't great. I also know that the numbers don't always tell the story. So as someone who saw him day in and day out firsthand, how did this season look for Cal Peterson? I think that for Cal, um, I think a lot of his games, he was really strong. I think that, you know, when you look at his starts between 70 and 80% of the starts that he made for the rain, he gave the team a chance to win. He was very sound. He was a guy they could count on. I do think that unfortunately, <laughs> kind of what happened with him in LA, the defense let him down quite a bit. Uh, And obviously LA improved their defense a lot after he was sent down in December. If you look at the numbers with just chances allowed, grade A chances allowed, the way that the Kings played in the second half of the season was a lot better than the first half. And what I looked at for a while, and and I don't know exactly, I haven't looked at it since the season ended, but for the first couple months that, that Cal was playing with the rain, his numbers basically mirrored what Phoenix Copley was doing. So I kind of looked at it as Phoenix Copley was playing great. He was winning a good amount of games, but he was still seeing a lot of grade A chances. There was a very young defense in Ontario. And after the first pairing of Jordan Spence and Tobias Bjornfoot, you know, the the depth on the defense for for the rain wasn't really great. And there was a lot of young guys who were learning how to play pro hockey. And you could see it in the chances that were being allowed. So I think when you look at the numbers for Cal, could he have been better? Absolutely. You know, he, he ends up with a, a goals against average, just a shade under three and a save percentage is well over 90%, but it wasn't outstanding and it wasn't so good that he pushed the Kings to call him back up. He didn't get another chance. He didn't, he didn't earn another opportunity because uh, you know, he wasn't playing as well as he could. And also Phoenix Copley <laughs> took that opportunity and ran with it. It was excellent. So kind of a combination of those two things, but overall, I think, that Cal definitely got his confidence back, but uh, you know it would have been interesting if if the Rain were like a juggernaut team and he was playing in front of a, a really solid defense. I, I think it would have his numbers would have reflected that a lot more. I think his numbers were very much based on the play in front of him, and in some games he was standing on his head. He still let up three or four goals because he was you know seeing 35, 40 plus shots a night. So. I think that was tough, but I think the one thing that was really great for him was he was so durable. Uh, You know, he did not have any injury concerns and he actually played more minutes in Ontario this year than he ever did in any of his seasons when he was with the rain before he uh, made the NHL with the Kings. So that was great for him that he got in a lot of games. He saw a lot of action. He saw a lot of shots. And now at the world championships, I think another opportunity for a confidence booster, I I think Frankly, had he seen the defensive play as strong 
as the Kings had in the second half of the season when he was up there in the first half, he might have never got sent down in the first place. But I, I think, you know, there is com- there's definitely a reason for Kings fans to be concerned. I mean, you know, you've, you've signed this guy to a, a long-term deal. You think he's your your number one starter of the future, and it didn't really work out. So, you know, it's, it's kind of an up-in-the-air question that, look, he's not completely falling flat. He did a, a lot of good things for Ontario, but it's still a big question mark on how will he perform? Will the Kings give him that chance? Will he earn that chance in – in training camp this year and who are the Kings going to sign that that's competing for a job with him? You know, they, they have some room to add if, if they want to. So uh, there's a lot of question marks there, but I think the, the answer is that he played a lot of minutes and did a lot of good things. It just wasn't enough uh, to, to get himself called back up at the end of the year. Other than Cal, the most NHL ready player for the rain, I would say is defenseman Jordan Spence. Uh, he played a couple of games for the Kings this past season. I would have liked to have seen him play a few more, but that's obviously not my call. Uh, talk about Jordan Spence, uh, how he progressed this year. And I, I, I'm sure you can't answer this, but I'm sure it must be somewhat frustrating for him to be kind of on the cusp of being an NHL player. And yet there's a lot of right-handed defense for the Kings. There's another one coming this this season as well. Um, how is he kind of handling all that from what you can tell? Well, Jordan Spence is a uh, pretty laid back and, uh, you know, fun going kind of guy. Like he doesn't come to the rink and worry about that, that stuff. I think he just comes and enjoys his time with his teammates. He, I think even, you know, the stretches that he was called up late in the season when he wasn't playing that many games, like he's somebody who wants to play. So when he was with the rain, he was never complaining or never in a bad mood. He was just happy to play. And, and also, I mean, the Rain were playing him 25 plus minutes a night. He was out there in all situations. And in the beginning of the season, I saw a huge growth in his game. Like from October, November, December, he was outstanding. And I do think that his play dipped a little bit down the stretch. I think whether it was, you know, that he maybe, in my opinion, at some point, you can outgrow the AHL. And I don't want to call him over, right? Because he's still only, I think 22 years old. So he's not, uh, he's not that old, but I think he's ready for the NHL. And I think that, you know, in the AHL, once you're, once you're at that level, you probably can get away with some things that you wouldn't get away with at the NHL level. And I think, you know, once the second half of the season started, I think there was a few things that Jordan would like to clean up in his game. I don't think it was a perfect performance by any stretch, but he also, was playing a ton of minutes, which when he gets up in the NHL, he's been more of a third pairing defenseman for the Kings. He's not kind of, he's not drawing the same matchups and he's not drawing the same type of type of minutes. So I think it would be really exciting for him to, to get some more time with the Kings. Obviously you mentioned the, there's kind of a log jam there on the right side and you know, he may end up with the rain again. Uh, he doesn't have to go through waivers to be sent down this upcoming season. So uh, you know, that he might just kind of be a waiting game a little bit more, but I do think, um, he showed a lot of, a lot of promise once again, definitely in his first season with the rain, uh, at, when his first season as a pro, his offense was there, but I thought his defense needed some work and he needed to be more physical. And this season, his defense was way better. He, his, he was much, much more comfortable when he was matched up against top forwards from, from the other team. And I thought his physicality really took a step forward as well. And that's what he's going to need to do as an undersized defenseman in the NHL. You're going to still have to be physical. You're going to have to hold your own. You're going to have to win net front battles. And he learned how to do that in the AHL this year, playing against some bigger, stronger players. So that was a step forward. I think, you know, definitely some, there was some careless play, some turnovers that he would want to clean up down the stretch and in the playoffs. Um, And so, you know, I, I wouldn't say he's perfect by any stretch, But I would definitely think it would be interesting to see if he could get some more time in the NHL, would that lead to, you know, some of those mistakes kind of going away because he can't get away with with some of the things that in the NHL that he gets away with in the AHL. We'll have more with Jared Schaffron in a moment. We'll ask him about another very uh, young, talented uh, Kings defensive prospect. Uh, But first, I need to remind you, today's episode of Locked on LA Kings, your team every day, brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Sponsor a job, and we'll match you with quality candidates 
whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description right when you post. Over 3 million businesses worldwide use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. And that's why Indeed, with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. We've got more with Jared Chaffron, manager of communications and content for the Ontario Reign and contributor to LA Kings Insider. And I know a lot of uh, fans, Kings fans, are very excited about the future of defenseman Brant Clark. He did play a few games with the Ontario Reign last year, some people might remember. Um, and I know a lot of this is going to be based on rookie camp, training camp, preseason. But do you think he might see a little more seasoning in the AHL? Or do you think his talent is so big that he's likely going to be an NHL player kind of right from the start? It's a good question. Uh, you know, we were just talking about this a bunch in, in our office earlier today. I, I think that it really almost depends on the rest of the roster because right now it's too early to say, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. There's some guys that are RFAs. Um, the Kings have to fit some more players into a short amount of space on the salary cap before the season starts. So I think it's a, probably a question's better answered during training camp just because we don't know what the makeup of the roster is going to be. I think that Brant Clark is clearly good enough to play in the NHL. The question is just, you know, does that make sense for the Kings? That They have a lot of other players. They have a lot of other options on the right side. It may make sense to have him start in the AHL and then bring him up as necessary during the season because, again, just like Jordan Spence, you're able to send Brant Clark down without going through waivers. You don't have to risk losing him. He is a young player. He hasn't played many pro games. And, you know, the AHL is a different league. It takes a little bit to get used to. So his five-game sample size, it's hard to really, you know, say. But in his five games, he was looked good. He looked like he belonged. But he didn't look like he was too good for the league either. Like, if the Kings sent him down, I don't think that would hurt his development at all. But – the Kings are trying to win hockey games. And so if they decide that he's the best player for them to win games, they're going to put him in their lineup. If they decide, Hey, we'd rather go with some of the other options, Sean Dersey, Sean Walker, Jordan Spence, Matt Roy, you know, those, all those options on the right side. And they say, Hey, Brent Clark needs a little more seasoning. They can send him down. So I think the best, best answer is that he'll probably play for both teams next year. It's just a matter of how many games will he play with each of the two teams. And, you know, where is he going to start? I'm not really sure, but I would say there's a better chance of him starting in Ontario than finishing in Ontario. Rob Blake, the Kings general manager, was asked in his exit interview about Alex Turcott and what he'd like to see from him, and he had a one-word answer, health. I know it's been a tough go for the former Kings first-round pick. Do you have an update on his health going into the offseason? And maybe just talk about the season for Alex Turcott. Yeah, well, I think the reason why it was only one word is because when he's been on the ice, Alex Turcotte's been an impact player. And, you know, Marco Sturm, when he had the op the option and the opportunity to put Alex Turcotte out there, he did it a lot. Uh, when Alex Turcotte was healthy, he was one of the best forwards with Ontario. You know, after he returned from an injury uh, in the second half that he had, uh, that he sustained in San Jose, I think it was in February, he came back and, um, I think he only played like seven or eight games during the stretch before he got hurt again. But the the rain were like six and one in those games. And, and he was a huge factor. He was setting up his teammates all over the ice. He works hard. He wins battles. Like he was doing all of the things that you'd expect from him. And he did play more games, I think this year than he did last year by a few, but there's no doubt. Like he needs to play a full season. Uh, and that's the most important thing. And, it, and that's because, you know, it just, he hasn't been able to develop the way that, that, that they want, but at the same time, he, he's an impact player. And if Alex Turcotte's healthy, he can absolutely be an option for the LA Kings next year. Again, kind of depends on what their roster situation is, but if he's healthy, which is a huge, if, you know, then, then he can definitely be an impact player. He did get called up at, at one point during the season. It was his second call up in as many years. And I think he was pretty productive, uh, you know, in that, in that fourth line role that he was in, in the opportunities that he got. So, um, you know, he, he did have a, kind of another minor thing in, in the playoffs. He played through it, finished the season with the rain, was not available as a black ace, although the Kings didn't really have much time for their 
for their black aces. It was only a few skates of the black aces before the team lost to Edmonton. But Alex was not available for that due to an injury. And uh, he should be pretty much at full health right now. I think that was kind of just a minor tweak that he had suffered in the postseason play with Ontario. So kind of expect him to be full go for a full off season of training and a full summer where he can get ready for another season, um, which is exciting, you know, because I think for him the last couple of years, it was missed rookie camp and, you know, some of those kind of things that he missed. I don't think he's going to be worried about those things. I don't think the Kings need to see him in development camp or rookie camp. I think he can take a full summer, make sure he's rested, make sure he's healthy, and then in training camp, hit the ground running and for him, hopefully make the LA Kings roster. I think he'll probably be on the bubble. I think if you look at the forwards that finished the year with the rain, he probably would have been my first call up if, if the Kings needed somebody on their bottom six. So I would think he's going to be nipping right there for a roster spot. And again, if, if he doesn't make it, he'll be one of the first call ups in Ontario next year. We talked about Cal Peterson participating in the World Championships for the U.S. Uh, another rain player who is going to be there is Martin Kromiak, uh, representing Slovakia. Um, so I want to ask you about him uh, and also maybe just as far as the level of competition for the World Championships which are coming up in a couple of days, how does that compare to the level of play at the AHL, for example? Yeah, Martin Kromiak, really great opportunity for him. He is another player who, you know, health kind of factored into to his season. He started – just a terrible sequence of events in the off season. He was, he was having some issues and finally got ready to go to begin the season. And then as opening night was, uh, was about to start the, the morning of morning skate, he wasn't feeling right. He, he didn't feel well, something was off and uh, ended up having an appendicitis. So just a terrible timing on that. And he missed the first month of the season, just kind of recovering from that surgery, which again, not really much you can do. Um, so that was a, a frustrating start to him, but now it's nice. It's almost like he deserved a little bit more time because he got that slow start and he's going to get it with team Slovakia. He did play in two exhibition games for Slovakia after the rain playoffs ended. He flew back to his home country and they played a couple games against Germany that were actually in his hometown and his home rink that he's used to playing at. And he had two assists, um, which helped him make the team for Slovakia. I'd expect him to be in a top nine role on the wing for that team. Uh, they definitely have a lot of young players who are on the, you know, on the rise playing for Slovakia and they should be, you know, probably a middle of the pack team in, in the world championship. So a great opportunity for him to continue to play. And as far as the level of the tournament goes, you know, it definitely kind of depends on which roster you're looking at, you know, just like most of the international tournaments, the U S Canada, uh, Sweden, Finland, you know, Czech Republic, those are the, the probably the better rosters and a lot more players who have played in the NHL or in the AHL. Some of the other rosters like Kazakhstan and Latvia, you're definitely going to see some, some players who play professionally overseas, maybe not at the level of the NHL. Um, but I think a lot of the competition is a little bit better than the, than the AHL. If you kind of look at some of these rosters, you know, you look at the U S Nick Benino is, uh, is going to be the number one center. He's the captain of the U S team. There's a lot of players on all the rosters that have played in the NHL and have some NHL experience. So for a guy like Chromiak, who's used to playing the AHL, this is probably maybe like a, a half step above as far as, you know, when he's going up against the team, Sweden uh, with Carl Grumstrom uh, from the Kings that's playing for Sweden, that team's probably better than an AHL team, but there's some other teams that probably be at the AHL level of play with, you know, some of their rosters not having as much experience or, Having a lot of guys who play pro, some of the some of these rosters are a little bit older than the AHL. Maybe the talent level is not quite there, but there's older members of of the roster that maybe play overseas in, in one of the pro leagues in Europe, and it's a great opportunity for those guys to kind of get their name on the radar. And there's a lot of scouts watching that tournament, so I think you kind of look at you know a lot of young guys who have played this who have had a good showing. You know that's kind of a, a jumping off point. Like Trevor Moore is a great example of a player who went into this tournament, the Worlds, with the USA. Had a great uh, summer tournament there. Played center, actually, and kind of used that as a springboard into breaking out in the NHL the next year. And Cal Peterson, who's going to be there as well, uh, you know, he had a great tournament. He was named goaltender, best goaltender in the tournament a couple of years ago. So those guys have have used that to kind of jumpstart a, a good NHL season. And I'm sure a guy like Chromiak's looking to do the same. That is Jared Chaffron, Manager of Communications and Content for the Ontario Reign and contributor to the LA Kings Insider. 
Jared, always appreciate your insight on the rain. Always appreciate you giving us some of your time. Enjoy the off season. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. And again, thanks for uh, giving us some insight on the Ontario rain. No problem at all. Thanks a lot, Eddie. All right. Thank you, Jared. Uh, we do have a few more things to uh, talk about. Um, he mentioned Carl Grunstrom. That was some news I wanted to share. Uh, but we need to let you know real quick that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings, your team every day, brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Buy tickets for your favorite events uh, because that shouldn't be stressful. And Game Time is the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theaters near you. With the Game Time app, tickets are easy to find and buy for every kind of event in your area, and you get the lowest prices guaranteed with event cancellation protection. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, and the Game Time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find a ticket for the same price in the same section in a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone. You never have to dig through your emails for them. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Again, we want to thank Jared Chaffin for joining us. Um, did want to mention some news that he briefly brought up, but uh, in addition to Cal Peterson and Martin Kromiak uh, playing in the World Championships, we found out that earlier today, Kings forward Carl Grundstrom has made the roster for Team Sweden. Uh, so good opportunity for Tonka to get some more playing time against some decent competition. Uh, just hoping he stays healthy over there. That's the only thing that worries me about players that take part in these types of events. But Grundstrom's one of those players that I think could definitely benefit from taking part in an event like this, a younger player getting some more ice time, working on things. We talk about Cal Peterson looking to work his way back. Martin Kromiak is a younger player. Those types of players definitely uh, can benefit from uh, some competition at the World Championships. And so for you everydayers, we will definitely keep an eye on uh, Cal Peterson, uh, Martin Kromiak, and Carl Grunstrom and see how they do and update you on what they do in some future shows. I did have an announcement real quick before we close things out. Uh, always great to have this show available in multiple places. Obviously, we're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Overcast, and CastBox. Uh, now I'm told we're available on the SiriusXM app, so that's obviously very cool. I know that next season, if you listen to an LA Kings game on SiriusXM, you're going to hear my voice promoting this show uh, because I recorded a promo for this show, so that's very cool as well. Um, there are still some kinks to be worked out, but if you search Locked on Kings on the Sirius XM app, you will see two shows with the same name. The first one is Locked on LA Kings. The second one is some NBA team, I guess, that's in California. I don't know. No, I, I kid. I, I kid. Um, I, one of my best friends growing up lives in Sacramento and is a huge Sacramento Kings fan. He actually texted me during the playoffs. He said, I'll root for your Kings if you root for my Kings. And I said, that's a deal. Unfortunately, both our Kings exited in the first round of the playoffs. But uh, again, very cool to see that this show and all the shows on the Locked On Network now available on the Sirius XM app. Hey, coming up on Thursday's show, we're going to continue our look back and ahead uh, at the LA Kings by focusing on one of the players on the roster. And we're going to focus in on LA Kings leading goal scorer, Adrian Kempe. And on Friday, it is another Kings fan feedback show. I highly encourage you to get your questions in now. Any comments you have on anything we discussed today as well is certainly up for uh, up for grabs with Jared Shaffron. Um, let's hear it. You can always leave your comments below if you're watching on YouTube as well. But if you want to send an email for the Friday Fan Feedback Show, again, I would encourage you to do it sooner rather than later. The email address is lockedoneddy at gmail.com. E-D-D-I-E, lockedoneddy at gmail.com. Also would encourage you to stay interactive with the show by following us on Twitter and Instagram. We're at Locked on LA Kings. Once again, thanks to Jared Chaffron for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow. And as always, go Kings go.